Hey guys, it's Sam Gold. We're going to try a new format this week. In this video, we're going to break down Shane Waldron and what he brings to the Seahawks. This video will be a two-part series where in this one we'll talk about the run game and next week we'll talk about the pass game. We're going to talk about everything about the scheme, what you need to know, and what I really like about this offense. Now, we've talked about this very scheme on this channel a number of times. We talked about it with Kyle Shanahan and Reem Mostert. We talked about it with Kevin Stefanski and Nick Chubb. And lately, we've talked about it with Derrick Henry and how Arthur Smith became the new head coach for the Falcons. In my opinion, this is a great scheme if it's executed properly. Before we fully dive into the scheme, though, let's talk about what the Seahawks did with the run game in 2020. For this video, I tracked Chris Carson's last 67 runs. What I found was that roughly half of them were inside zone. Most of them were out of shotgun, but the key point of this system came down to how the Seahawks used Russell Wilson as a threat on the edge. Even though he didn't take the ball very often in 2020, or honestly really at all, the threat of him on the edge was a big reason why the shotgun inside zone run game worked for a good part of the season. Outside of shotgun inside zone though, the Seahawks ran outside zone and gap plays like duo out of shotgun. This is good news because this is the exact style and plays that Shane Waldron ran with the Rams. The other good news is that the Seahawks single back runs were actually really good. They averaged 4.8 yards per carry as opposed to 4.7 when they ran a shotgun. From my notes, I saw a lot of pre-snap and during snap motions, and one of these occurred on roughly 50% of the time. Before we look at our first example, I want to give a huge shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this week's video. HelloFresh is here to make eating better and easier. No grocery stores, no stressful meal planning, just everything you need to prepare a wholesome and delicious meal all delivered to your door. I honestly have no idea why I've waited so long to try it, but trust me, it was definitely worth it. This week, my wife and I tried the beef bulgogi bowls, and they were mouth-watering good. The produce was fresh and had a ton of flavor, the meat was portioned perfectly with plenty for both of us to share, and the recipe was so easy to follow and made the entire experience effortless. All their meals, just like this one, can be finished in just about 30 minutes. Now, not only was everything delicious and easy, but what honestly took the experience to the next level was just how flexible they were to fit my lifestyle. You can easily change your delivery days, you can add extra dinners or lunches to your orders, and in general, HelloFresh just makes the process so simple that I strongly recommend giving them a try. If you go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10GOLD, you get 10 free meals including free shipping. Again, go to HelloFresh.com and use my code 10GOLD to get 10 free meals including free shipping. Alright, now let's get back to the breakdown and look at an example. This play happened in week 15 against Washington. The Seahawks are an 11 personnel lining up the left hash. They have Chris Carson in the backfield, while DK Metcalf has a tight alignment on the left. The Seahawks then motion Freddy Swing before the snap. He's actually running a jet sweep to the opposite side. I want you to pay close attention to the movement of Washington's defense before the snap. Number 20 trails, and this is a big reason why a hole is open for Carson. All Carson has to do is read Chase Young as the end man in the line of scrimmage and you'll make his cut based on position. Young thinks he has to take the B gap, but he's essentially in a no-win situation regardless. If he takes a C gap, Carson would just cut inside, and if he takes the B gap like he did on this one, then Carson would just bounce the run outside. Carson easily steps around him and he makes his way into the second level. He then meets Cameron Curl in the hole, lowers his shoulder, and he's able to pick up a total of 10 yards. Now, I like this play a lot, and this is exactly what the Rams did under Sean McVay last season. Outside zone was the foundation for their offense. They would stretch the defense from sideline to sideline, and then once the linebackers would start flowing in that direction, they would call inside zone, mid zone weak, or gap plays in order to hit the backside. Plus, when you add in misdirection like on jet sweeps or orbit motions or flies, and the offensive line can create some serious movement. For McVay, he loves running this play out of single back. He'll use one or two tight ends, whereas a guy like Kyle Shanahan likes running this play with a fullback. I expect Shane Waldron to run it in single back, similar to what McVay did last season. Now, there's a lot to like about this scheme, but there are two main reasons why it's so appealing. The first is personnel, while the second is alignment. In terms of personnel, they love using 11 personnel while mixing in 12 personnel depending on the situation. This is just that one to two tight ends that I mentioned before. And having two tight ends on opposite sides creates a balanced look which makes it a harder tell for the defense. It makes it more difficult for them to figure out which side the Rams are running to. I also mentioned wide receiver motions, and that creates mismatches. Imagine motioning a wide receiver inside, and a defender doesn't adjust, and you automatically create a better angle for run blocking. The other reason why this scheme is so appealing to me is based on the condensed formations that McVay uses. It allows the wide receivers to be more involved in the run game. I mentioned the run blocking angles before, but it also helps in the pass game too. We'll talk more about that in my next video, but the TLDR is that it gives them easier releases for crossing routes. Imagine Lockett and DK running drags and digs, and you automatically have a leverage advantage. 
This is something the Seahawks defense has a lot of trouble with in the past, and now they'll be the ones doing it. Finally, the last thing I have to say is their use of tempo is really cool to see. And that's not just going fast on every play, but it's the change of pace that I really like. You'll see them using it on play-by-play -play basis or a drive-by-drive basis, and it really keeps the defense off balance. Here's another example. This run is very similar to the player already broke down with Chris Carson, but this time it's with Cam Akers. This is another outside zone run. For the purpose of this video, outside zone and wide zone are going to be used interchangeably. While this is technically not true, it's the case for 99% of people out there. Before the snap, the Rams are in single back. They are lining up their strength to the left side, while both Cooper Cup and Robert Woods are in a tight alignment on the right. This is that condensed formation I was referring to before. On this one, the Rams ran outside zone fly. Goff could theoretically hand the ball to the fly sweep if that was a call, or that fly sweep could be used purely as a misdirection to open up the run game. That's what happened here. Upon taking the handoff, the offensive line will reach block to help seal their defenders inside, while the running back will target the tight end. The running back reads are the following. He'll read the end man on the line of scrimmage, and then he'll work his way back inside. Seeing a monster hole formed in the C-gap between the tight end and left tackle, this is where Akers bounces run. He sprinted through the hole, he slipped Trey Flowers' tackle, and then he gained 17 yards on the play. Outside zone is the foundation to this offense. It also formed the base of their play-action passing game too. We'll talk more about that in my next video, but needless to say, this was a very effective play for this offense. The other play outside of outside zone that the Rams love running is called mid-zone weak. Similar to outside zone, this is a zone stretch run, but the key difference is the aiming point of the running back. Instead of targeting the tight end like Akers did on that previous play, his goal on mid zone is to aim for the outside leg of the tackle. Also, the offensive tackle will drive the end man outside, and this is what helps create movement. The running back will then cut based on that push. Before the snap, the Rams motioned Robert Woods from the weak side to the strong side. They did this to see how the defense would react. Is the defender trailing, or is the defense just adjusting their alignments? Now this tell isn't as helpful on a running play, but it still does give the illusion that this can be a pass. This is all in an effort to keep every single play looking the exact same. Going back to this play though, the Rams are in 12 personnel. They have two tight ends on the left, but they also have two wide receivers very close to the formation. Again, this is that condensed split we've already talked about. After the ball is snapped, the Rams ran sweeps with Woods and Cup to the opposite side. Watch how quickly the backside blocks got down the field. All Akers really has to do is make one cut, and he has an easy AR gain. These two plays, outside zone and mid zone weak, they made up 75% of the Rams running plays. You're going to see these a lot next season under Shane Waldron. The other play you're going to see a lot of is a gap play called Duo. The Seahawks also love running this play too. It looks like inside zone, but the key difference is that it's blocked based on gap assignments as opposed to zones, and it's exclusively run to the strong side. Also, another key difference is that the running back will read the Mike linebacker as opposed to a down lineman. For the Seahawks and the Rams both, this is one of their most dynamic runs. It's a really good play because it feeds off the zone stretch game. It created giant holes in the defense because linebackers would flow strongly in the other direction to stop it. Here's an example of this run. The Rams motion Robert Woods inside and his goal is to steal out a defensive back. This formation, once again, uses that same condensed look in order to create angles for the run blocks. After the snap, the Seahawks defense flowed strongly to the right to stop the run. This is what created a one-on-one -on -one in the hole with the linebacker. Bobby Wagner, who is normally elite in these situations, was completely schooled on this one. Akers then just kept on running, and he picked up 20 yards. Generally speaking, the big difference that we're going to see besides a play here and there is simply the amount of outside zone at a single back. For my tracking, the Seahawks ran single back outside zone 15% of the runs. Next season under Waldron, I expect that number to be closer to 50. I also think we're going to see a lot less power and trap. That change is mainly due to the switch to more zone principles as opposed to the man blocking that we've just seen in the past. Now, before we end this video, I wanted to address the two most common concerns I've seen from people regarding this scheme. It seems like Mike Solari and the current state of the offensive lineman keeps getting brought up. Mike Solari, who is the offensive line coach, he might not be the best fit for outside zone. The argument is that he's more of a power to inside zone guy. While there is some truth to this, my counterpoint is pretty simple. The dude has 40 years of experience. Also, it's not like he hasn't coached outside zone before. The Seahawks already ran it a bunch last season, and I don't think it's going to be as big of a deal next year. Plus, with Andy Dickerson, who is the Rams assistant offensive line coach becoming the Seahawks run coordinator, I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. If it is, and I'm completely wrong on this one, then we can just replace him next season. Now, outside of Solari, the other thing that people keep bringing up is the current state of the offensive line. People bring up that it's more built for the heavier inside zone and gap running game. 
For example, Damian Lewis, who was the Seahawks' third round pick this past season, was really good at down and man blocking as opposed to the reach blocking that this scheme requires. People argue that he just doesn't have the prototypical agility of his own blocker. While again, there is some merit to this, he still does have a ton of potential. He was one of the best run blocking offensive linemen last season, and I think we just need to give him a chance. Also, this team with their mishmash of offensive linemen all last season, they averaged 4.9 yards per carry on outside zone. I do think they need another tight end that is good at inline blocking, but at this current moment, I'm just not that concerned. So that's all I have for you in this video. In my next video on this channel, I'll be looking at the pass game. We'll look at a number of concepts and how Waldron will pair this run game in order to create big plays. Please do me a favor and leave any comments and suggestions below. That's all I have for you. Thanks again for watching and feel free to follow me on Twitter at Samuel R. Gold.